We have committee deadlines because the Constitution requires us to adjourn at the end of basically the third week of May. And the committee deadlines allow us to channel an end of session in a neat orderly way. So a committee deadline determines that actions by one body in committee have to begin stopping. The first deadline is for actions by the House, in this case, to stop actions on House files. The second deadline comes in when Senate files come over, and it's for House committees to stop action on Senate files that have come over. And then the third deadline is for the end of action on financial or fiscal bills, omnibus bills. The third deadline, uh, as it's established in the resolution, is the deadline for, for major finance and appropriation bills to be out of the finance committees. Uh, so that would mean like agriculture finance or higher ed finance have to finish their bills at that point. The, uh, um, the joint rule, joint rule 2.03, says the, the committees on ways and means, taxes, capital investment, and rules are exempt from the deadlines. So it means the bill has to be out of agriculture finance, for example, but not necessarily out of ways and means. Or that the tax bill uh, doesn't have to be out of the tax committee on that date because the tax committee is exempt. We start this process with sometimes two, three, four thousand bills. And a legislature often passes two, three hundred bills into law. So the committee deadlines help funnel. It's like a, almost like a, a funnel that filters through the thousands of ideas into those that have the general support of the legislature and of the Minnesota public, allowing us to get our work done and go home. It's a deadline. It's a way to get people to make decisions. It, uh, it's, a, it's a point in the process by which a certain step has to be met.